hello hello friends welcome to my channel my name is jesse and welcome to our homestead in the middle of the ozark mountains correct me if i'm wrong i've had a little bit of a lack of sleep as you can expect with a brand new baby but i believe this is our third installment of our nursery design series if you missed our last episodes i'd highly recommend you go ahead and check those out but for now let's move on to today's projects so birthday celebrations have been in order for a special somebody for her party decorations i decided to give myself a challenge i set out to only use items that can be purchased at a grocery store anything i could gather from our land and items i could pick up from around the house my family and I used to have a wedding and event design business. We've had clients spend tens of thousands of dollars on their decor alone. A limitless budget can absolutely be fun, but a budget without limitations is by no means necessary. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you how everyday items and a little bit of elbow grease are all you need to not only throw a beautiful party, but make the ones closest to you feel loved on their special day. These party design tips and tricks can also be applied to Mother's Day, baby showers, and any celebration in between. We'll be making our way back to the festivities in just a moment. For now, the nursery is calling our name. If you watched any of our Christmas video series, you'll know I've got a strong love for stamps. I had mentioned we would be making our way back to my collection and here we are. For the longest time, I have had my eye on the Sparrow wallpaper. I'm actually a really big fan of wallpaper. I've got it in a couple spaces within our home. I don't like the fact that it is a massive commitment. Once it's there, it's there. And if you want it down, man, you are going to be paying for that process. For this project that is the nursery, I was planning on using it within a very unconventional place. That said, I felt it would be pretty difficult to apply, and if I did want it removed, it would just be that much harder to take it down. So, that all said, instead of wallpaper, I decided to go with, you guessed it, stamps. So I have to admit I was quite nervous with the room having had a brand new professional coat of paint. I didn't want to mess that up, but after all, paint is paint, and if I did mess up, unlike wallpaper, I could just roll right over and do it all over again. If I'm being completely honest, I absolutely had to do that as this was definitely a trial and error process, but once I got the hang of it, if I do say so myself, I think it turned out quite well. Before we get to the end result, let's rewind time just a bit to a moment when I was nine months pregnant. And I'm gonna take a brief intermission to ask that you please don't judge me for being pregnant on a ladder while painting. I did constantly wear a mask that was intended for paint fumes and I was very cautious while climbing and standing on the ladder. Okay, now that that said, I'm always getting asked about paint colors and that is the first thing that I forget to put on here. So the paint color that I chose was Gladiator Gray by Bear. I didn't pick Bear for any particular reason other than the fact that when I was able to slip away, it was late that night and the big box store that carried that brand just happened to be open. I've also been getting asked what paint color we chose for the walls of the nursery and that was Oyster White by Sherwin-Williams. I will say if stamping your walls is a project that you'd like to tackle as well, make sure that you get a latex-based paint and a one-coat paint 
paint would probably be in your best interest as well. One thing you will have to take into account is whether or not your walls are smooth or textured. My walls do have a light texture and that was definitely working against me. Also, I tried several techniques as to how I would apply the paint to the stamp. First, I tried using a sponge, then I used a roller. I ended up preferring the roller, and I also learned that a light coat of paint completely covering the stamp is the right way to go. Too much paint and the paint will bleed over. Too little and, well, you obviously won't have enough paint to leave a mark. As you can see, I'm painting after I stamped. The textured wall was not picking up portions of the stamp, so I had to go back and put in all the places that the stamp was not able to reach. This step was definitely time consuming, but in the end, it was more than worth it. Quick side note, I also had a second stamp to add a little bit of dimension, but unfortunately it came warped and it happened to be warped where the head was and nobody wants a headless sparrow on their ceiling. So I opted for a single sparrow. I really wasn't quite sure how this project would turn out. I felt like I was just stepping out on a limb, but I am really glad that I went for it. My whole original intention of adding wallpaper to the ceiling was to make the room feel very whimsical and almost fairy tale like I think that that's exactly what this project did. Not only was it a more attainable and practical application, it also saved a ton of money. So I'd say if you like the look of wallpaper and don't like its price, or you happen to not be able to find exactly what you're looking for, this project just may be calling your name. And now let's move to present day and on to our next nursery room project. We are beginning it in one of our favorite antique shops. Being surrounded by what inspires you is the best place, in my opinion, to start any project. And that's exactly where we find ourselves today. Like I've said before, I like to keep a loose interpretation of the vision of any project that I have. That's because my projects are dependent on what I'm able to find. I can tell you it isn't every day that you find exactly what you're looking for in the exact moment that you're looking for it. But in this case, it must have been our lucky day because that's exactly what happened when we stumbled upon this beauty. It was completely covered and surrounded by other things and I almost walked past it. I am so glad I didn't because it is such a gorgeous focal point. It's the right color. It happens to have that slight curve that I was looking for. And it honestly looks like it was just made for this project and this room. So now that we have found it and it has been installed, let's head back downstairs for what I have lately been referring to, my source of life. for my morning and mid-afternoon coffee. I don't know where I would be these days. She is definitely our best sleeper out of the four, but nonetheless, she's still a newborn and sleep is my friend. All that said, whoever discovered coffee, I am forever indebted. Now that my coffee is starting to do its job, let's talk vintage mantles. 
I have to admit, I was just as excited about how I would decorate the mantle as I was about the mantle itself. I'm almost embarrassed to admit it, but next year's seasons have all been mapped out as far as how I will be decorating it. But before we do that today, let's just have one more moment for this thing of beauty. I can't find anything that I don't like about it. I love the lines, the soft curves, the warm color, and the perfect distressed patina. A lot of companies are trying to mimic these characteristics, which I have to admit, they're starting to do a much better job but these are just qualities that can't be mimicked with new pieces. Also, I love the fact that it just carries so much history. I like to imagine who was sitting in front of it, what the house looked like that it was residing within, how it must have been adorned during the holidays. Anyway, I'll stop blabbing about it. So if you haven't noticed by some of the pieces that I'm attracted to, I'm a bit of an oddball. There's no rhyme or reason as to why I choose certain pieces other than the fact that they just bring me joy. Kids rooms happen to be one of my absolute favorite spaces to decorate. I love letting my imagination run wild and the fact that there is no restraints as far as creativity goes makes it all the better. Every time I design anything, I really strive more so for a mood and the way the space makes you feel when you walk in it than I do a certain look. I realize when you think of a kid space, you rarely think of a neutral palette. I promise I will be adding more color as we go along. I like to decorate in layers. Anytime I do use color in my design, I normally add it in as one of my final layers. The colors that I do use are normally in the form of accent pieces. I prefer doing it this way because I tend to really love change and I am always redesigning according to the season and time of the year. When the colors are in smaller accent pieces, they can easily be exchanged accordingly. With spring and Easter just around the corner, I wanted to keep the mantle super simple as I knew I would be redecorating it very soon. On top of that, I really wanted the mantle to be the focal point. The idea is to accent and compliment, not to distract from. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the room so far. I love reading your feedback in the comment section. Maybe hear some things that you would have changed or possibly what your favorite pieces or parts are. Whatever you may have to add, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. All right, now that that portion of the nursery is all said and done, let's get back to party prepping. Every time one of our family's birthdays rolls around, they get two birthday celebrations, one with the family and another with friends. For their family day, they get the entire day to themselves, which means they can pick out whatever they want to do. Sometimes it is going to the museum, maybe a trip to their favorite place, Lola loves going to have a spa day. Whatever it may be, it's their day. If it happens to be your birthday, the festivities begin the moment you wake up. 
There was a moment in time when the kiddos woke up very surprised. Now it isn't as much about the surprise as it is about making them feel loved. Every eve of the kids' birthdays, once they are put to bed, Blake and I spend a good portion of the evening decking out the house in accordance with whatever the kids may be into at that moment in their lives. All that said, we are currently celebrating Miss Lola Rose's 12th birthday. If you were to ask her what her favorite things are, she would tell you animals, being in the outdoors, and gymnastics. With her birthday falling just before the beginning of spring, I have been feeling particularly inspired by the season. I drew most of my inspiration from that fluffy white dogwood tree that sits right outside the kids' playroom window. Referring back to what I said at the beginning of the video, to decorate the house, I'm only going to be using things that can be found in the grocery store, anything that can be easily foraged from outside, and items found around the house. For this project, we are going to be taking a simple coffee filter and turning it into a beautiful decor piece. Materials needed are string, a spray bottle, any type of coffee filter, and a threading needle. For my project, I'm wanting to leave the coffee filters white, but there is so many options you can do with this as far as dye goes. A nice ombre effect would look so good. Be dyeing each strand a different color. The possibilities are endless. Maybe that's something I will do in a future video. So to begin this project, we are going to straighten out our filters. I've used several techniques as far as how I spray them. Whichever way that you find that works best for you, just make sure that every layer gets dampened. The easiest way that I would recommend is taking a stack of them, lay them on the countertop, and spray a section at a time, front and back, flattening them as you go. How many you want to use is dependent on how long you want your strand to be. I used about 150 coffee filters for the centerpiece of my table, and I believe my table is about 9 feet long. So once that project is all said and done, you will have a stack that looks like this. In the following step, there is no need to wait for them to dry. You're simply going to take your thread, thread it through your needle, and start stringing the coffee filters. You are going to put your needle in the center of the coffee filter and press through. I would recommend a sharper needle as the sharper your needle, the easier it is to penetrate and the faster the process will go. Continue stringing until all the filters are on your line. I will say make sure your strand is as long as you will need the actual piece to be. These filters will definitely fluff and stretch out and you'll be surprised how large the piece actually gets. Once you've got your filters all strung, you are going to give them a little scrunch. Go ahead and flip through them cluster by cluster. Do this until you've made it through all of them. As you are giving them a good wrinkle, try your best to separate those that are stuck together. Once you have worked through all of them, your stack is going to look a little something like this. Now this next part is optional, but I think it ultimately works out a lot better if you do choose to do this step. So once you've got them all scrunched, you are going to take your blow dryer and run through all of them. I prefer to use the blow dryer because it really separates the pieces from one another and it ultimately makes it a lot more fluffy. You'll see as the layers begin to dry, they will start to stand up on their own and the piece will really begin taking shape. 
Once your piece is completely dry, what you do with it is completely up to you. You can make multiple strands of it. I can just imagine these hanging from the trees and the juxtaposition between the white fluffiness and the dark branches of the trees would just be so beautiful. I chose to use mine as a centerpiece and I surrounded it with flowers I, you guessed it, purchased from the grocery store. many things that can brighten a space like fresh cut flowers can. Flowers come in all price ranges depending on the type and the location they're purchased from. In my opinion, a flower is a flower irregardless of where it came from. As long as the flower is fresh and healthy, they're all the same. Now what separates one flower the next is how they are arranged and presented. With all that said, I'm completely fine with purchasing mine from the local grocery store. If put in the right vase or displayed properly, even those picked by your kiddos can look just as good as those that come from a flower shop. I will say the one limitation with purchasing from your grocery store is that selections can be limited. I will say natural food markets like Whole Foods and Fresh Market tend to have a really great selection. All this is not to steer you away from purchasing from your local flower farmers. In fact, that's one of my favorite places to purchase from. All is to say if you happen to be on a budget or you only have access to your local grocery store, beautiful flower displays are not outside of your reach. Separating your flowers into vases and varying them by height and the number of flowers per vase will not only add interest to whatever space you may be decorating, but it also makes your bouquet go a long way. If you don't have a vase, no worries. Any type of vessel around the house will do. I am actually using milk jugs that I used on a previous project. Mason jars can be a really affordable option and you can find them absolutely everywhere. So by using a pack of coffee filters and two bouquets of $5 flowers purchased from the grocery store, I'd say that's not bad. Well friends, I very much enjoyed having you with me. As always, I appreciate your sweet comments and all of your support. I hope you'll join me for our next episode where we will be finishing Lola's birthday party up as well as our continuation of the nursery. If you don't want to miss our upcoming episodes, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification. If you enjoyed this project, I'd greatly appreciate if you would like the video, both subscribing and liking really helped me in the algorithm and that's super important being a brand new channel. Much, much thanks as always. We'll see you soon.